so I think I found a pretty clever way to save a bunch of money. Uh, I have a full set of LS2 uh, fuel injectors, which are about 350 cc, not nearly big enough. All right, that's not gonna work. Um, but I did look at, into some information about decapping them and basically creating a much higher flowing injector. Um, so that is what I'm doing now. And um, what I figured out, I tried just like dissecting one. See, I have one over here that I just totally just grinded and tore apart and, uh, and to the point that it was totally ruined. But well, I, I learned how they're put together. And what I figured out is basically, if I just take a stock injector and hold the tip, the normal capped tip, nice and flush on my grinder and just grind, basically grind away that material until there's just, till you can just see the pintle, the round little pintle valve. Um, that seems to work pretty good. So I've already done it to one and got it, and I actually compared it to the stock ones and I'll show you a comparison of that too before I'm finished here. And huge difference, maybe tripled the flow. Um, also still holds pressure, everything else, all the other tests passed. So I'm gonna do it to um, six of the eight injectors. And as long as all six of them pretty much have the same flow, once I'm done back flushing them and, um, and doing all my cleaning, then we're gonna send it like that. And I, man, I bet you these are seven, 800 CC injectors once I'm finished, but they do have to all be pretty even. And they're all really mucked up because they've been in the attic for six years with old fuel, you know, just kind of old fuel residue on them. So they're pretty nasty, but I'm gonna get them all cleaned up and get all the, all of them decapped and, and let's see how this goes. It seems pretty like pretty easy and a good way to save like 300 bucks. That pencil is exposed, that's when I stop. And I mean, you don't want to grind into the valve itself, of course. It's like as soon as it's exposed, I've been stopping, but they all have appeared pretty even. So this is my sixth one. I already got the other five over here. I'm about to run an ultrasonic cleaning on them with the injector machine here. So once this one and all those have been ultrasonic cleaned, then I'll go ahead and plug them into my chingadera here and we'll see if they all flow the same. We're gonna get them all reverse float. They've all been ultrasonic, and then we're going to do some flow testing. All three of these have been modified, as well as those three right there. The first one here that has not been modified, this is totally stock, say totally stock injector. And so I'm testing these on a high speed spray value test. And uh, that's not bad for like checking max flow. And it's just like right there, just with that. So just on that flow, you can already see this is the stock one. These are the modified ones. And they're pretty much nice and even. So that looks good. I'm gonna take this last one that has not been modified and go ahead and make the same modifications to it that I did on the other five. And then we should have six perfectly good, perfectly flushed out injectors that are good to go on the Lexus. And another very important thing to check is that it hold, they all hold pressure without leaking. So. There's a function on here too, where the gauge just shoots up to about a little over 50 PSI. And I just watch for drips. And uh, general rule of thumb, at least according to the manual, is like one drip per minute is permissible. So anything beyond one drip per minute is excessive and can be a problem. You know, if you run the car and then shut it down, you're just sitting there parked and it's just dripping fuel sitting on top of one of those intake valves or dropping into the cylinder, that could be a problem. But all these are holding. Uh, I haven't seen any drops at all since I've started testing it. So I think they're good. I'm gonna go ahead and modify this injector and give it a good cleaning again, and then um, do a leak test on all of them again. And as long as all that measures good, then they're gonna be good to go for the Lexus. Seven, 800 CC injectors for the Lexus, probably gonna be looking at about $45, $50 a piece, give or take. And there's six of them. So now we're talking $300 that we're gonna be saving by just using these old injectors that I already had. All right, so I got the final injector modified now. Ran a quick test and you can see they're all just dead nuts even. Beautiful, all of them right at about 28 milliliters uh, after 10 seconds of running on high speed. And so those look great. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a leak test. Leak check test. And uh, as long as none of them have any excessive dripping, I'm gonna go ahead and do these other two and just make sure they're all good. 
and then we're going to be done. All right, baby, it's Saturday night once again. Matt's out running a quick errand. He'll be joining me here shortly. As for right now, it's just me at the shop. And today, what I got planned is putting the building a downpipe for the Lexus. So I'm gonna show you what I'm working with here. Um, just got a little bit of material, just basic materials, um, real cheap tools, I don't have anything special, really never done anything like this before. And this was also my first time actually building something out of stainless. So definitely a lot of experimentation gonna take place here today. But I do think we're going to be able to work it out and make it make it hopefully look OK. But more importantly, it's going to do the job it needs to do. Um, I have not found a downpipe that looks like it will work with this exhaust manifold that we currently have on the car. So uh, definitely going to be very custom. We got a four foot piece of stainless three and a half inch pipe. Then um, I just got this cheap miter saw that I got from Home Depot. And on it, I've just put uh, one of these DeWalt cutting wheels um, that's meant for kind of like all types of metal materials. So that's a pretty hard bitch to cut through. I cut through it with the Sawzall down here just where I was practicing and it was tough. So we'll see how that thing holds up. I got a few extra blades in case that goes to hell in a handbasket. So I'm just gonna kind of start with, start at the V-band at the back of the turbo and then just make a small pie cut to get started. I'm just kind of eyeballing my space here that I have to work with. And right off the bat, I can tell from right here, we're gonna need to make about a 45. So right out of the turbine housing, we need about a 45 to get us down going this direction towards the opening. And one thing that I feel is important during pie cutting pipes is that all the pies are, are pretty close to the same length. I think that gives it a better uniform look, makes it look a little more professional. So I'm just kind of winging this here. Like I said, I figure if we're going for 45 degrees down there and I, I need to decide how many pies I want, and I figure three pies would be a pretty good would be a pretty good, you know, good start. We should be able to make a pretty sharp angle. So then I just took 45 degrees and I, I count the turbo as one of my pies too, because it's kind of where our line starts. So we got our line, pie, pie, pie. And by the time, by coming off of that final pie, I want to be at 45 degrees. So I just divided 45 by four and got about 11 degrees. So I got my saw set to 11 degrees right now. And I'm going to make just a first cut there just to get the angle started and then flip it and do another cut. So I have one piece that has 11 degrees on both sides. And uh, then I, as long as I like the way it looks, I'll go ahead and weld it to the V-band flange that goes on the turbo. And then we're just gonna go one piece at a time. I figured this cannot be that hard if we just go one piece at a time. Spot welds to hold it together. That way we can undo if we don't like it. I got a lot of tube to work with, or a lot of pipe. And just plan to shoot that thing straight down at the ground. You can see down here that the wastegate dump goes down the same direction. So this pipe's gonna just meep, sit right above or right to the rear of the wastegate dump. And uh, that's pretty much where it's gonna end. It's just gonna blast fireball straight down at the earth. All right, so just reporting on my first cut. Um, one thing I am gonna do before I take it off of the little clamp here is I'm going to draw a line best I can just right along the top. And then I'm gonna make my changes here. Just go 11 degrees the other direction to get that first pie. And I'm already just looking at that angle and thinking that's, may not be enough for what we're trying to do. But we'll see, let's keep moving forward. Like I said, I got quite a bit of room for air. So we should have it figured out pretty quick. So we got the first piece of pie and it looks pretty good. I did 11 degrees on either side and it was pretty burred up. So I had to take it to the grinder and just kind of bevel the edge just a tiny bit, but pretty easy. And now it's nice and smooth. It's not all jagged and messed up feeling. So what I'm gonna do now is just tack this puppy onto my V-band flange here. And then uh, that's kind of gonna be our starting point. And we're just gonna build off of that. All right, we got two pieces of pie tacked on there. And we're just rocking and rolling, baby. We're gonna go ahead and cut another pie. And then that should be the three I need to make my initial 45. And once I've gotten to about where I can start planning the next turn, once it does this first 45, I might have to use like a longer straight to get around this runner right here. And then I'm going to begin to curve back downward, like like to the right a little bit. And so I can get nice and lined up with that dump pipe. Honestly, I bet I'm making pretty good time. This is actually going pretty well. I should be able to get the O2 sensor bung welded on it and everything tonight. All right, so now that I got my three pies welded to my V-band, I can see that my math might've been a little bit off. And if you look at it, if I have this on like a, if you imagine this flange on a flat plane, we're definitely more like probably 
80 degrees there. I don't know, maybe not 80, but probably like 70. So I was going for 45, and it looks like after the second pie, after this one was put on, we were probably at 45 then. Should be like another 11 degrees, so probably more like 56, 60. But I don't know, that still looks closer to 90. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. I'm still just kind of piecing it one thing at a time. The cool thing is like the sizes of the pies are pretty uniform, so that's gonna make it look pretty good. So if I put it up on the turbo here, you can see we're actually doing okay. So now I'm gonna be running it pretty close to this runner at the end here. If I should put like a straight on it that's two or three inches long to get me past that end runner. And once I'm past the end runner, I can just turn it down, but I'll still have to do like an S shape to follow the line of the dump. And that's really just where the exhaust has to go. It's not like I'm going for some certain look. It's just, it has to go past the dump and it's gonna be a snug fit. So let me try to figure that out and uh, we'll come up with something. All right, so we are just ticking along here. I've got a little bit of curve going off to the side now. So when she's down in the hole, it goes down around that first runner and then takes a slight turn back towards the right. So I gotta kinda keep that, keep that going. So I have learned some things. These pie cuts up here are about, are 11 degrees, 11 degree cuts on both sides. And that seems to be a pretty happy angle because this one down here I did at 15 degrees on each side. And the problem with that is then it changes the overall circumference of the, of the hole that you're basically the, the end of the pipe when you're welding it, this piece over here is larger than this piece. So it does, so you can see like I got a little bit of overhang on both sides because it just makes it larger to cut with more angles. So I'm finding 11 degrees is a pretty happy little mark. I mean, I'm guessing 12, 13 might be okay, but 15 seems a bit too much. So I'm gonna kind of keep working with these 11s the rest of the way out. And, uh, and you know, that's gonna be useful moving forward because really that rule can apply to all different materials and diameter pipes. I mean, I, 11 degrees or 15 degrees, it's all the same, relatively speaking. So we're definitely learning some things. Uh, I had a hard time getting a good spot weld on this right here and I ended up having to cut it and melting the edge of the pipe a whole bunch. So that's gonna be kind of tough to, to close up, but I'll be able to seal that up. Everywhere else, we got pretty tight gaps. So all the other welding should happen pretty quick, but we are gonna stick below 15 degrees so we can make sure the rest of our gaps remain nice and tight. And this will be done before you know it. Hey. Now I got my dude here. Finally, I got some help around here. And what are you working on? Uh, so we're re routing the power steering reservoir right now. After that, we're doing the fuel return, which this is a returnless fuel system. So we're gonna have to add some in there. Um, Boost likes return fuel, so yeah, we, we gotta like be able boost to flood it and run it back if we need to. So, uh, so we gotta modify the actual in the pump hanger assembly, of course. Yeah, so we've got our bracket in here at the power steering. We're already about to route that all up, and the next step is just gonna be basically to follow the delivery line for the fuel system back to the tank axle. Mm -hmm. I got those injectors there. in the truck too, the modified injectors. Yep. Yeah, no fuel rail. The whole thing's going tonight. Fuel rail, fuel injectors, which Steve modified with our fancy little. Uh, uh, fuel injector cleaner, which is also a tester that we bought last year, which actually is turning out to be a huge, great awesome investment. investment. Already paid for itself because uh, that's three hundred dollars worth of injectors. I mean, minimum three hundred dollars. And, and uh, so we'll have yeah, power steering yeah, done in a minute. Gonna have, after tonight, hopefully, other than than the intercooler piping, we're gonna have everything ready to go besides the computer, and then we're gonna be ready to start maybe in a few weeks. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. And I got a new wideband. Yeah. <laughs> and we got a so fuel pressure dude. regulator. We, really, the parts list of things we need is getting very short. So oh, very we're going to be tuning in no very time. Very soon. We're going to be tuning <laughs> real soon. So you keep working on that. I'm going to keep working on this. I, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll check in here in a few minutes. Yeah. All right. So Matt's got the power steering system sorted out. She's sitting in her bracket right now. And because of the angle we had to do this port, we are unfortunately having to run the hose over the intake for now, but I think we're gonna be able to route it in a manner which it doesn't look terrible. Just gonna have it tucked off to the side here, running along the fuel rail with the harness, and I don't think it's gonna be that terrible. But the important thing is, all the hoses are hooked up for the power steering system. Once it's full of fluid and blood out, power steering is gonna be good to go. On at the downpipe, I'm making some pretty good progress. I, I wish I was getting more of this on film, but honestly, it's like, it's just ex such an experiment and I'm just trying to figure things out. I'm really not always thinking to pick up the camera, but you can see how nice my fitment is so far. 
just all tack welded right now. Right now it's bolted up or clamped up to the turbo and it's narrowly missing the end runner there and it's going down and you can see the dump pipe because that little pipe just passed the end of it. So now I got this one last pipe. I'm thinking this is going to be my last pipe and it's just a straight that I cut a slight angle at 11 degrees and so that should be able to bolt on the end of that or not bolt weld on the end of that and runs pretty much straight along with the dump pipe so we're jacking the car up right now matt is just beginning pulling the fuel pump out so we can fix the fuel system well i thought he had the back seat out i swear he almost did oh there he is anyway he's gonna be pulling the fuel pump out here in just a few minutes so we can get rid of the regulator the returnless regulator block it off and then we're running a new hose all the way up here to the rail, baby. Whoop. All right, just got the last piece put on and this is how our downpipe's gonna look for now. It's beautiful. It's running just perfect parallel with the dump pipe. And it looks so good. It's not touching the body. It's touch not touching the dump pipe. It doesn't touch the headers. It's just routed very nice. It actually turned out really good. Couldn't be more pleased. I'm gonna go ahead and start fully welding it. And here's a top view. And uh, it just kind of snakes around and down. Really, like, not too bad. I, I stuck with 11 degree cuts on most of them. If I needed to go a little extra distance, I just cut them a little longer, like this one. And I kind of like put angles on everything. Like, even if I was just trying to cut a straight, I would cut it at an angle because it would just gives you so much more like just movement, like adjustment. Whenever you go to fit it, you can just turn it a little bit and you can just kind of tweak, you know, the eccentrics of it in an eccentric manner. But uh, pretty excited. I hope I don't ruin it with my shitty welds now. Let's go ahead and try it. All right, so working on fully welding the downpipe. It fits great, looks fantastic. The welds are really bad in some places I am pretty good in others, but from like right here where I'm standing, it looks, uh, looks kind of cool. Uh, so what we're working on now is Matt's been Matt pulled the fuel pump out of the car and we're trying to figure out how we're going to run our return fuel system because one thing about this car is it has a saddle tank which basically is two fuel tanks so you have to have transfer from the right tank over to the left tank that has the pump otherwise when you get to half a tank you're out of gas right. which basically doubly complicates everything it does make yeah. things a bit more complex and I've seen a lot of guys that are just blocking off the little port that comes off of the fuel press pressure regulator which is this guy right here Showing that thing it's this guy right so here so there's like this whole little block that's responsible for fuel pressure regulating but it does more than that so whenever that extra fuel runs through here what's called the jet pump i think then it it creates a suction that acts on this hose right here that goes over to the other side of the tank so that fuel transfers from the right side of the tank over to this side that has the pump. So if you were to just block that regulator, you're basically eliminating any transfer of fuel from the right tank to the left tank, and you're going to be running out of gas when you still have, you know, probably a third of a tank left. So basically just driving around with dead weight all the time, and we don't like that. So what, we're gonna, what we got set up here is we're gonna just, there's lots of write-ups of people doing different things here, and I just don't have a lot of confidence in any of them. I think most of those guys are just running on half a tank, but, uh, we're going to keep trying to work it out and see what we can figure out. All right, dude. So I think we solved the fuel pump mystery. And what I know for sure is that no one on the internet knows how the hell to make this a returnless system except us. So let's just take a look at the two most crucial components here. This is the sock fuel pressure regulator right here. Okay. So in order to make this a returnless system, basically or a return system, we have to bypass this pressure regulator because this regulator regulates everything at the pump and whatever extra fuel is, uh, is there, instead of going to the fuel rail, it just dumps right back into the tank. So we need that extra fuel for boost. So by putting a little RTV in that little guy right there, well, epoxy, excuse me. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna drill a hole right here into the top of our little fuel pump. So this here is the other crucial component to the stock fuel system. Just the flow of fluid creates a venturi effect and sucks fluid from, from the other okay. side. So this basically creates a siphon through venturi effect from the saddle tank. So we got three little jets coming out here. Initially, this one led to the fuel pressure regulator, which took fluid in or took, took fuel in 
and whatever excess fuel was needed was pumped right back out into the tank. So, yeah, so and just so that, to, that to, defeats our purpose for boost. So the fluid comes through here and then up into this black hose and then it came out here. Okay, so it just does a little loop-de-loo there. Well, while that's happening, this port right here goes to the other side of the saddle tank and it just creates, as fluid's flowing this way, it creates a small amount of suction that goes up and is pulled over, thus pulling fluid from right. the other side of the tank. Right, so basically the excess fuel that's coming out of this little valve right here from our returnless system is the pressure that creates the, the, the suction that pulls the new fuel over from the saddle tank. Right, so and so what other guys online were doing is just, just basically, basically blocking the, the whole tank. thing up. Yeah, and that's an extra 30 pounds in this tank. Yeah, you know I mean, you I mean? got fuel so, just sitting yeah, that you can't even exactly. use. Exactly, yeah. It's like running with half a full tank when you're on empty. So how are we gonna plumb that up? So to make it work. basically what we're gonna do is instead of this running through this regulator here, we are gonna plumb the return hose straight through here. So the return fuel is actually what's gonna create the Venturi effect to pull fuel mm -hmm. over from the saddle tank. Yep, so we're gonna so run- So just by eliminating this completely- Well, using that use, as a plug, yeah, so we're gonna use the return pressure coming from the fuel rail to suck fuel over from the saddle tank. But we still need the regulator to just, be in there. Just to, just to block off. Just to block yeah, off exactly. the hole because yeah. the fuel pump goes like up into the body here. Uh, not this, but the body over there, the fuel, the pump pumps into here, it goes over and down this tube to the, so if you left that open, your fuel pressure would all just go right there. So we're still gonna, we filled that with epoxy to plug that hole. Filled this guy. So all the fuel right. must be delivered to the fuel rail. Right, and then straight It'll back to the right tank back, to suck it over. Go from the through our tank. freaking uh, Venturi pump and everything will work just like it should. <laughs> but we tore it apart, we figured it out, and now we got a plan. So Matt's gonna get that back together tonight. And I am just about finished with this thing. I got like one more well to do, and then I gotta make a hole in it and put an O2 sensor bung. And damn, that'd probably be all we're gonna do tonight. That'd be, make a pretty good night where there's junk and stuff. And we learned. All right, so we are coming to an end here. And we got a lot done, I think. We got the fuel we pump we modified. Got some shit done, for sure. So Matt took care of modifying the fuel pump. I got this downpipe all done completely. Got and them. let me just be the first to say it's, it is beautiful. Take a look at this. It looks here. really Come cool. On. Come on. Now keep in mind, this is the top end. We're not gonna lift it up right now because everything's not set up. We're, but just, just take a look at how nice that fitting is. No contact. It's really, you know, not that bad of an experience. I, I think it went pretty well. Just, you know, it's pretty simple when you just put one little piece in at a time. We were messing with the fuel injectors. Uh, we got the wrong rings on the fuel injectors, which is no, no surprise because they're from a Corvette. They're just stock from a Corvette. But, but so we need to get that's some. That's an easily solvable problem. That's yeah. a good thing. So yeah. hopefully next week we'll be able to get the fuel system finalized, and then we can start working on wiring. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's going to be it for this week. Thanks for watching, guys. As usual, like and subscribe. Also wanted to drop in here that we do have an Instagram, Master of Machines, and a Facebook page, Master of Machines. So definitely check us out on social media. It's all you, the same. Come find us. We're we, here. We yeah. might get a little bit, uh, like, small weekly updates throughout the week. Yeah. It's whatever we're working on. And just on. anybody interested in ISs, we're kind of figuring most of this stuff out on our own. Honestly. And I think that we're making a little bit better solutions than what's out there. So, I mean, if you guys definitely. are if you guys are building an IS, keep in touch, man, because we're going to be doing big things with this guy. Yeah, sure. we're doing a lot of engineering on our own end. And, and honestly, I think we're over, we're solving a lot of problems better than the forums sure. are able to, yeah. to assist. So, definitely drop in the comments if you got any questions or anything. Otherwise, we'll see you next week.